time for a haircut and he doesn't even know it. Gramly! <gasps> yes, it's time for a haircut. What a good boy. That was such a sweet, tiny moment. Are you ready for your haircut? What a good boy. What a good boy. So he wears a harness and his mom wants to take him a little bit shorter, but we're still gonna give him some style. It's a thrilling moment for all of us. So I'm just tipping his nails. Usually the first one, they're fine, and then the second one, they start to realize what you're doing. And then they're like, holy cannoli, I hate it all. Okay, good boy. So I'm just making sure I build trust and show him that it's not so scary. Let me see, do you have a dew claw? Yes. It's so tiny. So by tipping the nails, I'm able to build trust. For a five month old baby like this, I'm not gonna go crazy with anything in this grooming. I mean, look how tiny. It's just like a little teeny, teeny dew claw. This is why it's so important to get these dogs groomed really early on so that they get used to it. so great. I feel him kind of like jerking a little bit as I touch him. So I think he, he doesn't love it, but he's putting up with it. And so the main thing I do, I want to do is just show him that it's not so bad. It's not so scary. I want to set him up for a lifetime of joy with grooming if possible, or at least tolerance, really high tolerance. So what I want to do is just um, rehydrate the coat a little bit. He was fluffed out, but I, I haven't combed him and I haven't finished the fluff out. See, so he's pretty curious about this. So I just want to make sure I'm including him in my process. I'm making him feel like he's a part of it so that he was just kind of sniffing around. He's curious and so then he can, he can check out the scene. So when I put the air on, it might be a little scary for him. So I'm just going to be aware that he might jerk around and be scared. So I'm gonna put my hand on him and I'm gonna introduce him to sound before touch. So here comes sound. Not too bad, I wish you saw his face because he's the cutest. So we're just doing some sound. He's still, he's gonna, see the end of the table and kind of test to see if he can jump. He's not gonna jump. I'm actively watching to make sure he doesn't. So I'm gonna grab my Tiny K Pro brush right here. And now I'm gonna put some air. I'm gonna start with his back legs. So now we're just getting used to sound and wind and touch and all the things. And I'm gonna be mindful of if I have any mats or anything in the coat. I just wanna make sure that my brush doesn't pull on the mat because my main goal with him is to build trust. And once I snag a mat on his coat, I will lose his trust because he will, he will equate this and me with pain. So I wanna make sure that he, the whole process is as comfortable as possible. He's such a good boy. Yes, he's a great boy. So I'm just, I've already fluffed him, but I'm just running this through him one more time just to make sure. Before I comb, I wanna make sure I, I got everything, any little tangle possible. And this is all part of gentle grooming. I'm setting myself up to have a nice relationship with this dog by making, just double checking that I don't snag any tangle. I'm gonna give him a little bit of freedom not a lot, just a little. He can explore the table. He's just like, if he looks like he's about to jump, I'll have to put the leash on. He seems okay. This is part of my training that we do here at the shop is I train dogs to be groomed without the leash on. It's easier for me to groom a dog without a leash on because I don't have it in my way. I could just freely groom the dog and walk around the dog. What a good boy. I mean, he's such a good boy. I'm gonna 
check my work. Anytime a dog wants to connect with me in any way, whether it's smelling my face or wanting to kiss me or wanting to look me in the eye, just make sure I acknowledge them for just a moment, just to show them that they're seen. So much of grooming is just showing a dog that they're seen and taken care of and valued. I mean, that's any good relationship, honestly. So if he wants to face this way, I have this extra long hose. So I'll just move to accommodate him and wherever he wants to face, for the most part, all while getting my job done. If I can get my job done while also making the dog feel like they have a little freedom, I'm gonna do my best to do that. At five months, he's just an amazingly well-behaved dog. So I'm not gonna fully fluff out his face. I'm gonna wait until I'm getting ready to trim his face because he has these teary, teary eyes. So I don't wanna double blow out his face. So all this stuff I'll do when I'm ready. Okay. Incredible. So now we're gonna get him used to the sound of the clipper. I'm using a five in one cordless and I'm gonna do a 40 on his feet, on his pads. And the 40 is great for skimming the pads, but I don't scoop everything out and get everything. I wanna make sure I leave a tiny bit of fluff in between the toes so that he has protection when he's walking. I don't wanna make the pad completely bald because then it'll, if he steps on a rock or something, there's just no kind of padding there. Okay, so now I'm just gonna start with sound. So we're gonna go sound. So he's curious about this. I'm holding his leg. I'm not letting him sniff the actual blade unless it's off. He seems okay. Most dogs, for the most part, that have had their pads done, get used to this pretty quickly. But I'm just skimming while leaving a little bit of fluff in between the toes right here. I'm gonna leave all that. So I'm keeping my clipper flat. And I also have the dog's leg tucked under his body. I'm not pulling his leg away. I'm making sure I'm mindful of his knees and joints. And I'm just moving him gently and respectfully. He's protesting a little bit, that's okay. I'm gonna keep going. I don't wanna stop when he protests because I don't wanna teach him that that is what will make me stop. I want him to know that I have his best interest, I have his back, and I still am gonna get my job done, regardless of if he protests or not. And I just do it respectfully. I kind of thread my arm under the dog. Usually the front legs are a little bit scarier for dogs, so I'm just mindful of that. And I'm using short strokes instead of long winded strokes. So I just wanna make sure I use little strokes just so that it's not too much, not too overwhelming. If I need to stop, and let him explore. He can do that multiple times throughout the groom. So usually when a dog wants to explore, they just, they just sniff, they're curious, and then they don't care anymore. Okay, I'm gonna keep the sound going. Just reposition him and get his final pad. What a trooper. I'm gonna to go to a 15, get his little tushy tush. That's all I'm doing over there. His mom really wants to go short on his sanding. So I'm still on a 15 and I'm just gonna go everything, just get it all off. So he's, I think he was just, oh my God, this clipper is so loud. He was just kind of like wobbly on his feet. So I just wanna make sure if you have a dog on their back legs like this, that you're mindful of their knees and joints and things. You just look for clues and see just to make sure that they're comfortable. Hi, hi good boy. 
long. Good boy. I'm going short. I'm going short. <sighs> what a good boy. I release one leg at a time. And now, that's a quieter clipper. Now I'm gonna do a short haircut because he gets a little matted on his, well, he doesn't really get matted, but the, um, the harness has been tangling his coat, so we're gonna go a little shorter today. And he's already had a haircut. Usually with puppies, I say, don't do a full haircut until they're, you know, they've, they're used to the bathing process already, and so he's been getting groomed regularly, so he is totally used to it. So I'm gonna try one and hope for the best. He just looks so cute this length, but it's okay, it'll grow back so fast. You're doing so great, my friend. Okay, it's time. So I'm, this is a drop coat, which is a really challenging coat type. So um, I'm just gonna comb everything back and I'm just gonna get started. And the reason I comb everything back is because if I were to comb everything down like this and take my clipper like this, it will potentially create lines in the coat. So I don't wanna do that. So I just wanna make sure I'm going with the grain at all times of this coat. So he's gonna sniff and explore. He can do it on this side now because the comb is protecting him. Hi, and he gave me a moment like a little are we good kind of look? So I wanna make sure I acknowledge that as I groom him. What a good boy, he seems really good. This should just feel like a comb to him. It shouldn't be scary. Good boy, good boy. So there's a fine line between comforting too much and not being able to get the job done. So like, obviously I wanna snuggle with the bear, but I have to get his hair cut. So I have to just make sure I keep a boundary as hard as it is. So I'm going with the grain. My strokes are short and intentional. This is a number one blade. I think it's about half an inch potentially. I don't really know the exact measurements of these blades, but it's really great. It's a great length. So I have a course where I talk all about uh, balance and structure, and it's called the Body Blueprint course. And I'm applying my Body Blueprint to this dog right now so I can make sure that he looks proportioned. Because when you look at the dog from the profile, you wanna make sure that you shorten the body, which means from here to here, you want it to be compact because it just looks really adorable. And whenever you have a dog, I mean, I don't know if you've seen a dog with like bow legs or they look like they have a big butt or like stuff like that. It's like, it's just not as elegant and compact and cute. So that's just on my radar as I groom him. I wanna make sure that he looks balanced and blended and elegant and adorable, just like a little bear. So that's always my goal with these dogs, with any dog really. And I apply my blueprint to pretty much every single dog. I have a body blueprint course and a faces blueprint and you're gonna see pretty much how I apply it to this dog to make him look more compact. And now I have a new course that I'm working on, my energy course, and that talks all about how to connect with dogs through energy and touch by looking for behavioral clues to respond to. So any behavioral clue I'm using as an opportunity. So right now he's just curious about something. And like dogs, they're gonna be curious about certain things, especially a five month old baby. Let them be curious, take a look around look around my table, whatever you want to do. As long as I get my job done and I just give them a moment and then they kind of stop and they're okay. So I just, I always know puppies are so predictable. I always know, I always know that they're going to come back. It's just a moment. 
So my goal right now is to just really have this be as blended as, as possible because it's so easy to create lines on this coat type. And like he's looking back and forth and so the back of his neck I wanna make sure I get, see right there? There's a couple little lines, so what can I do to blend it? He's just whipping around, so I just wanna make sure he settles. So I'm gonna go back over here and then just get in there when he's settled. And also one of the things I can do is I can take some thinning shears and, and blend it a little bit after the haircut. So I'm just sneaking in. He's doing so well for a five month old baby. Like what a good dog. I recently went to Korea to visit my favorite groomer ever. Um, follow her on YouTube, Shu and Tree. She's amazing. Her name is Jo Eun and um, she's my best friend. Um, she speaks no English, I speak no Korean, but I feel a connection. Um, she also doesn't know she's my best friend. Someday I'll tell her. Anyway, um, I went to her shop and she had this dog and it just started howling as, I was, as the dog was getting groomed. And just the way she handled everything and the way her team handles everything was so, it was so inspiring to me. I want my, I mean, the dog was totally fine. It was just, that's the dog's way of communicating. Like it wasn't hurt or anything. But I just remember that moment and I'm like looking at this five month old baby, just being a cozy bear. And just some dogs have different personalities. Some dogs are vocal and they bark. Some dogs are quiet like this. You just never know. But what a, what a pleasure this dog is to groom. What a nice baby. Okay, so I was gonna get his underline and now here he is. So if the dog is here, I'm just gonna do what I need to do here. As he walks, he's gonna dictate where I cut the hair. It's all gonna get done eventually, but I'm gonna just let him kind of dictate what I'm doing. Anytime I groom a dog like this, I just wanna make sure I'm really gentle with my handling. This is a really nice, sweet, submissive sort of energy with the dog. Dogs are natural followers. And so when a dog is like this and he's so trusting and relaxed, now I have a more gentle touch. I always have to just make sure that the dog's energy is dictating my energy. I'm gonna request his arm. He's a little unsure. He's a little bit unsure, but he seems okay. I'm just gonna reposition him. Just wanna to prove to myself, or prove to him right now that it's not scary. So for most grooming is just proving, proving to the dog that you're not scary, what, that you're safe, that what you're doing can be trusted, the tools can be trusted, I can be trusted. So it's just a constant game of proving myself to the dog. I'm just blending out those lines and they're coming out. There's like one little moment right here. He just, he's moving a lot, but there's just like one little moment, little line, and I'm gonna be able to blend that out with my clippers. I'm just going over that area a few times. So I'm gonna move his body and request the other arm. Maybe this side won't be as scary. Yeah, so he's, he's trusting with this side now. So it's all about how can I prove myself to the dog and make them realize like none of this is scary, none of it hurts, all of it has their best interest. And you know, you could do a beautiful haircut and then we'll set this dog up for a lifetime of grooming. A lot of grooming is all about uh, body positioning. So when I'm doing this side of the dog, for me, it's a lot easier to um, stand behind the dog and go this way, because I feel like I have a lot more control with my clippers if I do it this way. And you can see I'm just skimming down the leg 
And my goal when looking at the dog from behind is to not create any kind of like chaps or bow legs. So I wanna make sure that I have a really nice straight line on the outside of his legs. So now I'm just combing and checking my work. And let's get his little chest. Come here. It's okay, so see how he's like looking and he's a little unsure? I'm just gonna start the sound over here. It's okay, buddy. So that, that was just a moment of him being unsure, but he got through it. I'm just gonna lift one leg and do his little armpit, especially since he has a harness. He's fighting a little bit, that's okay. I'm not gonna let it stop me. Yes, a good boy. All dogs have cowlicks on their chest, so I always wanna make sure I go with the grain of the coat in every respect on these drop coats because it's really easy to see um, those cowlicks and they get shorter. If you go against the grain, it, gets, it goes shorter. So like just right here, I just wanna go a little bit shorter, but I'm gonna keep with the grain. Good boy. It was just a little yawn of overwhelm, but he's doing great. <sighs> okay, so I'm just going over my work and just making sure it's blendy. I'm just checking my work with the clippers and getting every little piece. Cozy bear. And all of this I'm gonna scissor gonna request the arm. He's doing great, that was a little scary last time I did it. And now he knows that it's not scary, so that's a little bit of a win. Just a little bit of a win. And sometimes a dog will gain trust with what you're doing and then you'll do it again and then they'll lose trust again and they get scared again. So you just have to rebuild trust, sometimes it takes a few times. So I can still see like a little bit of coat is still coming off. So I just want to make sure I get everything. When I have a big movement, he has a big movement. I'm just gonna get the sides of his neck a little bit. What a good boy. I mean, can you even? Can you even handle any of it? Can you even handle any of it? His name's Gremlin. Can you even take it? I mean, what a friend. What a good friend. So I wouldn't get this nice finish if he wasn't prepped well. So the key is to fluff and comb and prep everything beautifully, and then you'll get a really nice finish on the coat. So now I'm going to get started on his legs. And I start with the feet and work my way up. And with this kind of fun haircut, we're gonna leave his legs really full. So I'm only gonna tidy them. And all dogs have this cowlick here. You can really see it on a drop coat. You can see it kind of goes, um, it goes in here and then it scoops in towards the dog and then curls up and around. So I'm gonna make sure I have a really fine thinning shear and I'm just gonna go with the grain as much as possible to make it as blended as possible. Cause I don't want a lot of coat on his tush. I want it to be compact so that, like I said before, we shorten the body when you look at it from the side. 
but I still, I want it to be really blendy and I just wanna make sure I'm going with the grain as much as possible. I mean, what a little tush. What a cozy little tushy tush tush. I have two main thinning shears that I use. I use a super fine, this has 50 teeth. And then a less fine, this one, I don't know how many teeth it has, but it makes a lot of shape. So I can create tons of shape. See how it just chomps and makes a line? So this one is a lot blendier. So I really like this for very fine blending work like this. And so now I'm just gonna bevel his foot. He seems to be really easy going with his feet, which is nice. I'm gonna comb everything down. My comb was pulling a tiny bit and I noticed he was trying to escape because I think it was uncomfortable. So a lot of pet parents think that their dogs hate to get brushed, when in reality, chances are it's just hurting a little bit. So if there's anything you can do to make it less um, uncomfortable for your dog, the more they're gonna tolerate brushing. So my goal with, um, with trimming a foot like this is to lift everything up off the floor. I want it to look like a U from the back. So I start with the front, with the back, and then I do the front, and then I do the sides. That's always my go-to. So you wanna come to the front? And my shears are not really high up like this. They're kind of at an angle. And I just wanna make sure I just scoop everything off the floor. He has like no body weight on his le back legs. It's so funny. He just kind of floats. I'm just gonna get all this stuff out of here. What a good friend he is, what a good tiny boy. So when I'm doing a foot, I like to get really low and I just kind of scoop under. And I look at the dog from all different angles to make sure because I'm creating a round shape. So I can't just look at it from one angle. I have to see the whole thing. So I just wanna make sure I'm looking at everything from all different angles. And once I get the stuff off the floor, then I start using my thinning shears and I just start blending. These thinning shears are amazing. They're by a company called Utsumi. They are a Japanese brand and they are amazing. So I'm just looking at the dog from this, the profile and this is called the rear angulation. So I wanna make sure he has a really nice um, rear angulation and I give him a nice bevel of his foot so that nothing's touching the ground. He almost is gonna look like he's floating when he's walking around. And I'm not taking a ton of length off and you can see I'm just using this one pair of shears. So I'm not taking this, um, the leg down short. We're doing a fun style where I just leave his legs really fluffy and it actually looks more balanced than if I would take his whole leg short. But this dog is so cute, he would look cute regardless. I could go short, I can leave him long, whatever, and he's gonna look so cute. Puppy coats are way easier, by the way, to work with than adult coats. So I'm just kind of fluffing the coat out a little bit and so like I was talking about earlier, you just wanna make sure you go with the grain so it kind of swoops this way. So I'm just gonna make sure I go with the grain with my shears. I'm just gonna move my friend a tiny bit this way just so I can see the inside. And I wanna make sure that everything is straight when I look at it from the back. So I'm just gonna go straight down and just tidy and make sure the coat is lifted off the floor. I'm, bare, I'm really just shaping, I'm not even taking length off. But I can feel like there's a tiny bit, it's not really a tangle, it's just a little bit of 
um, resistance in the comb. So I just wanna make sure I'm very aware if there's any resistance in the comb that I have a really light touch because that is what the dogs don't like. That's why they fight us. It's because it's uncomfortable for them. So the more in tuned I am with his behavior and the more in tuned I am with my tools and the more gentle handed I am with my tools, the calmer my dogs will be because I'm building trust as I go. And that's really what I go over in that energy course. It's all about building trust, who knew? And it's funny because the more this, that course that, I, by the way, has been a goal of mine for so long, but like I've been putting it off because I'm like, well, I don't know how I do it. I just do it. But teaching it to my, um, my employees and students has actually helped me understand it even more. You know, like you become an expert when you teach something. And so I feel like now I feel like I really understand how to communicate that we are just building trust with dogs and trimming tushies, tiny little tushies. So I'm just setting in his rear angulation. I mean, can we just take a moment and talk about how well behaved this dog is? What a good friend. I mean, my God. Okay, so I have a little tiny bit of a hole here. So I'm gonna lift the coat and let's see if I can blend it with these shears tiny bit. These shears are like little erasers. Just a little tiny bit. I'm going to lift it up a little bit. Just see if there's something I can do. Yeah, take a load off, kid. Okay. What can I do? I'm going to just stretch the skin a tiny bit doesn't hurt no reaction from the dog and I think that'll do the trick there's like the tiniest little hole I mean only I feel like I'm the only one that would notice that I don't think the mom would notice but let me just check my work and so I'm inviting him to stand I don't pick him up I'm just um, I want him to stand up on his own that's so much better let me just do a little bit more So um, a lot of groomers tend to correct dogs. The only correction I really do is sometimes I'll do a uh uh, you know, sometimes, but for the most part, it's just a shh. That's really the only communication I have as far as vocal communication goes. I don't really talk to the dogs as I'm working unless I'm rewarding them with affection when they're doing something I like. I have my shears at an angle. He's a puppy, so he doesn't have a ton of coat here yet. He does have it on the other side though, which is adorable. That one of his legs is, hasn't grown in quite yet, the coat. He's getting tired. Now I'm just gonna lift the leg and just round his little tootsie. Usually I use the wide part of the comb for the body and then the fine part of the comb for the face, but either side works great. So now I'm just shaping while looking at the dog from the side. Just taking a little bit off with the grain to make sure I have a parallel line, getting my rear angulation set in on this tiny little bear. Uh-oh, I have a sleepy baby right here. He's like ready to, to go to bed. Honestly, same. Okay, while I'm here, let me just get his little tuck-up area. The tuck-up area is such a tricky part. The tuck-up area is basically right where that back leg meets the body. That's called the tuck-up. And you wanna make sure it just kind of flows in with my body, with my body, with the dog's body. Um, I just wanna make sure that it's flowing so that it looks like one cohesive line. A lot of groomers take this whole area off and what it does is it lengthens the body of the dog. So I just wanna make sure, I leave like, I just call it a little curtain. I just leave a tiny little curtain 
right here just to make sure it flows. Okay, I'm just gonna check my work from behind and then I feel like I'm, I have limited time because he wants to lay down. And I'm going between my, I have these curved shears that are from Harsley. Harsley is one of my favorite shear companies. Um, it's actually started by Jo Eun, Shoe and Tree, and her husband and another partner. And um, they make incredible shears. And I love their curved shears. And I love their thinning shears. They're just they're such a great brand. Okay, I'm gonna thread my arm through the baby's body, through the baby's legs, and um, just be really mindful of combing the top of his leg. Be really mindful of combing the top of his foot and getting everything that could potentially be on the floor. Mostly just focusing on the back. And just scooping everything up off the floor. I'm gonna move him. What a good boy. What a good boy. Yes, you're so good. I mean, I really can't believe how good he is. I'm gonna get low and scoop again. Scoop everything up off the floor so I have a nice bevel. So the back of his foot goes all the way up and he's gonna look like he's on his little tippy toes. And because he's a drop coat, I'm just gonna blend that a little bit with my thinning shears. So yeah, you can see on the side it goes whoop, goes way up off the floor and this helps keep the dog's feet clean and not matted. Oh, good boy, oh, good boy. So now I'm just gonna make sure I get the front and the sides. I always do the back first. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm creating a square and rounding the edges. So if a dog lifts their one leg, then I'm just going to lift his opposite leg so that he keeps that leg on the ground. Sometimes I have a hard time getting this angle, so I'll just put the dog's leg down and I'll just do it from this angle. Just kind of memorize what I need to trim. It's a little bit easier. He needs a moment. Uh-oh, we're losing steam on the puppy. I mean, you, you, you only have a certain amount of time with a little baby like this, because then they gotta go to sleep. Dogs like this, just dot puppies, they just have to nap a lot. Yes, a good boy. Yes, a good boy. I'm going to tidy and shape with my Utsumi shears and just round his front feet. And I have to be mindful that he's sitting down. So his, his foot is going to change shape when I stand him up. So I need to make sure that when I'm trimming his foot, as much as he's tired, I just have to make sure he's standing up just so I don't, um, it's not like a weird shape. Um, one of the things I learned when I first started grooming was to not let a dog lay down when you're grooming, when you're grooming it because the, the shape will change and they're gonna stand up and it's just gonna be so different than what you thought. I mean, I did it once. I mean, you gotta, you're gonna make mistakes as a groomer 
and I did it and the dog had like a pointy short weird foot and I was like oh no it looked great when it was lying down um, so just like I did with the back legs I want to make sure that the um, that the, the line on the outside of this leg isn't bowing out he's also twisting his body this way so I just want to make sure he is standing up straight and I can see the shape of his leg Seems like he wants to face this way really bad. So I want to honor that. If he needs to face that way, I can easily move my operation and go on the other side. Let me just get these really quick. So I can just move my operation. If you need to face this way, that's okay. He might just be avoiding me, but we'll see. Yeah, look, he's now facing that way. So it's just avoidance, I think. But um, I just want to check, just make sure that we're not giving him bow legs or bell bottoms. Although bell bottoms are really cute, so maybe next time. But I'm just doing like a straight sort of teddy bear cylinder leg. He can sit down now because I kind of already see what I need to trim. This dog is such a pleasure, such a delight, such a nice friend. So much of grooming is just doing something and then checking your work and then doing it again and then checking your work. When I say checking my work, I mean like I kind of comb everything out and I just see what it looks like. But you can see the way I'm looking at the dog, like I'm holding the dog and looking at it from the side. I wanna see the profile. I wanna see my lines. And I just wanna make sure that it's balanced and that has an, he has a nice shape. I'm really only using my Utsumis for the most part on his body because they're great for Shih Tzu bodies, like puppy Shih Tzus. Oh my God, all I need are these shears. They're just so good. I mean, and the Harsleys. His elbow's like poking out. So I just need to make sure he's standing straight. Check my work from the front. Can I get a tiny bit here? Not much because I really want this line to be straight. And so if I take anything off, it's gonna look like a banana. And I don't want that. I want this to be straight and then I want it to scoop up into the back. What a good boy. Wow. What a cute little tootsie. So now I'm gonna lift the foot up and just take the edges off from this angle just to make sure I, it's round. Cause like one of the things um, is to make sure that when the dog is in any position, they're cute. So if he's laying down like this, I wanna make sure his feet are really pretty from that angle. So I just check my work from that little, from withholding his foot in my hand and I can make sure that it looks really cute from that angle. You're a good boy. Okay, final tootsie. Let me just get one tiny little piece. Same as always, I'm gonna start with the back of the foot. I'm gonna just lift his foot up, comb everything down, being really mindful just in case there's any resistance in the comb. And I just take everything off the back of the foot first. And now I start my bevel. So when I put it down, nothing touches the floor. And then everything else I move up towards that. And I can't see it unless I'm looking on the side of the back of the dog. So I just wanna make sure my body positioning is seeing my lines that I need to see. While I'm here, I'll do my little tuck up area. 
just flow that back leg into the underline. Soon, baby, you will sit down so soon. So I'm blending that out with my thinning shears. So I always start with the back, then I do the front, and then I do the sides. While he's sitting, I'm gonna get his chest, because I wanna get this part too. If you're curious about why I scoop in the front of the arm or why I have certain angles, um, I go through it in depth in my Body Blueprint course. And I talk all about how to balance the dog and why I do certain things. So that is all part of the blueprint. And if you're wondering if you're a pet parent and you're watching and you're like, can I take the body blueprint? I've had pet parents take it. Um, it's not geared towards pet parents. I use a lot of expensive equipment that most pet parents don't need. But if you just wanna see the process and learn more about it, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with it. Just know that I did, I did create the course for professional groomers. Noni, noni. You could see how much his foot changes shape when he sits. I mean, I can see it. I don't know if it's that subtle, but um, I just have to make sure he's standing right now. Noni, no. Noni, no. I'm gonna just thread my arm through here and just hold the baby up. Cause he's a tired, sleepy baby. I mean, he had to get a bath. He had to get a blow dry. I mean, it's been a day. I do notice that he sort of leans forward. So I wanna lift his head up and just see if I can get him to stand up straight. Cause that'll determine the shape of my haircut. What a good boy. I know. I'm just gonna do what I can with him sitting. So I'm not gonna take a lot off and make big moves when he's sitting down, but I can do a little bit while he's sitting. Okay, let's check our work. Just making a parallel line down to the floor. Straight, because I want his leg to be more of a cylindrical shape. It's so funny how seriously we all take grooming. Groomers, pet parents, like, it's so funny. I was just having a conversation with his mom and I was, she was like talking about his butt length. She's like, I really want, leave fluff on his butt. And I was like, what? I was like, the butt hole, the butt tush. And I really needed to know. And like, this is, it's just so funny how I, I have conversations with people about the fluff on their dog's butt. It's just, I, I just think I'm like, this is hilarious to me. So, and honestly, I had like a big opinion because she wanted to leave a lot of fluff on the tush and I don't want to do that because of my rear angulation. And so I was like, well, can I leave? Oh, there he goes, he's out. And I was like, can I leave a little, can I make it tight and short? And she was like, just do you. But so, but we still had like a very serious conversation about his butt fluff. This dog's butt fluff took me two adults time to chat about. It's just, sometimes I just think about that and I'm like, what is, what is my life? What is this job? It's hilarious and also perfect and great. So funny how some, I think it was Liz Gilbert. I love Liz Gilbert. Um, and she said, we're all just monkeys in socks getting pissed or something like that. It was like a funny quote. We're all just monkeys in socks having, getting angry or something like that. 
And I was like, that's really hilarious. It's like a funny quote, like nothing matters is basically, I think. We're all just funny, weird people and nothing matters. Did I get too existential as I'm grooming a five month old baby? Just talking about how nothing matters. It's just funny. You have a lot of time to think when you're grooming dogs. That's why I love listening to audiobooks and podcasts and stuff when I work. Not only does it pique my curiosity and I learn, but it also calms me down. And so much, so much of dog grooming is making sure the groomer is calm. Because if I wasn't calm, it would transfer onto the dog for sure. There have been days when every single dog seems to be in a moment and I'm like, I just have to realize it's probably my energy. If every dog is crazy today, my energy's off. That's why I love to meditate. I meditated this morning and I just feel so calm and good. Okay, friends, this has been a fun five month old puppy haircut. Um, and I don't know how to say, um, I guess if you like this, like and subscribe, that's a good thing. Um, if you like this video, I have more on the way. So make sure you subscribe and comment below with any other dog you'd like to see. And I'll see you soon. Okay, we're about to do this face. I'll see you in a little bit.